Hey folks, it's Robin Robbins. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, I am uh, super excited to talk to you today about this uh, particular topic. Um, I do realize that it sounds pretty fantastic how to get other companies to send you qualified leads and new clients for free. Um, very, very aware of that, but I'm telling you this, it is 100% true. It's how I built my business. Um, it is actually a talk I've given not just to the IT industry and have taught to my clients, but it's one that I've actually been asked to speak at multiple conferences about. Um, in fact, this topic is the one topic, this strategy I'm going to share with you is the one strategy that uh, I get asked the most about from my peers, my colleagues, other, other industries, if you will. Um, so very excited to talk to you about this today. I think you're going to get a lot of value. Uh, my uh, goal is to to give you every penny you paid for <laughs> and that's a joke you know I, I'm gonna imagine you're all just cracking up so you know I know that's really lame uh, but uh, you know to give you your money's worth on today's webinar although it is free um, you are still spending time and I want to make sure that you know every engagement that you have with us is valuable um, because I am earning my keep, let's say, in your attention span. So um, I take that uh, with great respect that you've taken time out of your day, and I really want to make sure that this is going to be valuable to you. Um, a couple things, we, uh, we will make the recording available to you guys, so make sure you check your emails. Um, for, for the, the details of that, but uh, and also if you have questions, you can post that in the uh, Q&A section of the website uh, or of the, um, the, the webcast here. And uh, I've got Mike Stadola on with me. He's my chief marketing officer, um, and uh, he's going to be helping me with any questions you have. So please feel free to post those questions. Um, and uh, with that said, folks, we're, we're going to get we're going to get started. I hope you can see my screen. So if you can't right quick put it in the Q&A that you can. Um, but uh, what we're going to be covering today is we are going to be covering the single best strategy I know for getting new clients. And if I could only use one strategy, if I was somehow for some crazy reason handcuffed and said you can only pick one, uh, this would be it. It's kind of like my kids. My kids are, my six-year-old specifically is really into the mom. Hey, mom, would you rather have a cheeseburger or an ice cream sundae? She's into those kind of questions. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like that, but this really truly is the one that I would most likely use. Um, and I'm going to be talking about how MSPs and IT service companies are using this approach to generate literally hundreds of thousands in new MRR sales and clients. And that's not fake folks that this is a real real true thing um, the other thing I want you to know is I'm going to show you some examples from my business how I was how I have used it um, which I think you're you can still get benefit from but then I'm also going to show you how some of my clients are using this so just be patient with me because the beginning part I'm going to give you more of my examples because it's sort of I want to give you the how I discovered it and I want to tell you how I used it when I first started my business because a lot of you are probably more like me back then than, than where I am today because um, today you know I've got a lot more uh, a bigger list and I've got money and I've got clients and you know I, I'm not anywhere near in the don't have a list don't have any clients don't have any marketing don't even have a website kind of mode right no marketing systems and so this is what I used early on when I was literally like not even flat broke because flat broke means you're kind of like you know, even I was like well beyond broke. I was in debt and everything else. So we'll talk about that. And then why the shutdowns are making this strategy really a perfect storm for you to use it now. And I'm going to give you examples of clients and how they're using it right now today. Again, guys, I will just encourage you if you have any questions to post that in the question area. Um, now, just to, just to make sure you guys are out there, I got a question. How many of you um, have heard me speak before, or maybe even a better one would be if you've never heard me speak before, you've never engaged with my organization, maybe you've never been on a live cast with me, um, post that in the questions because I want to make sure you guys can hear me and it also kind of give me some context. So if you would, write in the question chat, um, let me know if this is the very first time I've had the privilege and the opportunity to talk to you. And uh, okay, so I'm seeing some people say my first time. Never heard of you. Okay, I got a couple clients out there. Okay. All right. That's a good ego check for me because I like to think I'm very famous. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be funny, guys. I'm, and I know I'm not. So yuck it up because this is about as good as it's going to get. That's why I'm not a comedian. I, uh, you know, I stick to marketing. But anyway, so, okay, some of you watch me on YouTube. Okay, fantastic. So a lot of you are brand new. So I am going to take a very quick moment to give you a little bit of background on uh, why you should listen to what I have to say. Um, and, and the reason I feel that I owe you that is because if I'm going to sit here and tell you, hey, you need to listen to me about how to market your uh, your MSP or if you're a VAR IT service company, um, you know, I don't think I should just assume that you should take my advice um, you know, because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of fake people out there. So, um, I get it. So really quick, um, I started my consulting practice back in 2001. And since then we have worked with well over 10,000 MSPs, VARs, IT service firms, and they have been, and that's enrolled in one or more of my programs. Now, if I talk about how many people I've spoken to reached, I mean, it's, it's, it's far greater than that. Um, and uh, I've seen the industry kind of evolve because, you know, when I first started, MSP was just kind of in its early foundation, um, you know, like companies like Kaseya were just getting started, these RMM tools. Um, and since then, you know, that has evolved. There's a lot more MSPs today. And now even today we're dealing with um, MSSPs, uh, managed um, security um, specialists, so people who are, you know, managing networks, but more on the security side, et cetera. Um, and so by any means or measure, whether you want to look at number of clients, revenue, retention, we're the largest, most successful marketing consulting firm in the channel. So this is not my first rodeo. I've been around for a very long time. And we currently run the largest peer group in our industry. We've got 618 companies as members. So sometimes there's more, there's more than that as individuals, but and the reason I want to share that with you is, um, you know, we have a lot of clients, but peer groups, what I mean by peer groups, these are people who meet on a weekly, quarterly basis, and they are being run in coaching groups. Um, and that really is our, uh, that's where I get most of my industry knowledge, because I work very intimately with, in, intimately with them. I know their, their financials, their metrics, the lead flow, because they report those numbers up to me. So um, that's, that's a really key point, because I, I want to understand score that when I share with you what's working and I share with you the case studies, um, they're real and they are based on me working with the, the peer group and the thousands of other uh, IT firms in my, in my uh, client base. Um, based on paid attendees, our annual boot camp is the second largest MSP event in the channel. I think, I think ConnectWise still has the largest um, we're gaining ground, though. Um, we just actually had a virtual event la this in, last year, and it had close to 5,000 attendees, which I believe was the largest virtual event for our industry for MSPs. Um, it's just shy of 5,000. We're the largest reseller of CRM system, so uh, it's based on Keep, but it's a whole package of solutions that we sell. Um, and the, I'm the, also the founder of MSP Success Magazine. Uh, we've got about 30,000 MSP subscribers subscribers to that magazine. And the thing that I am most proud of, and I think I can hang my hat on, is we have more documented client success stories than any other marketing consultant in this industry, period. And to me, that's very important because if you talk to a number of marketing firms, agencies, consultants, gurus, et cetera, et cetera, um, you know, you get, you get the two kinds that are out there. One is they are basically giving a book report, not a field report. And what I mean by book report is they are, uh, you know, creating their, their strategies based on what they see other people doing, but they haven't done or nor have they done it for their clients um, or they haven't done it themselves. I mean, just the other day I had somebody, um, you know, point out to me a guy who was selling sales training and I, he, he does, it's just him. He doesn't have a sales team. And I, I don't know about you, but I kind of feel like if somebody's going to be giving advice on something, they ought to be doing it themselves, right? They ought to be doing like, if you're selling how to coach and manage salespeople, you ought to have like salespeople working for you. I would think, um, and maybe I'm just persnickety in that, that regard, but I do take a lot of pride in the fact that we are very results driven. Uh, we get, I mean, you can look at our website. We've got hundreds of videos and written and audio testimonials, case studies. All right. So again, I submit that to you not to brag, but just to uh, underscore that uh, what I'm sharing with you today will work. It's not fantasy. It's not a, it's not a 
field report in the sense of, you know, here's what you should be doing, but we don't do it. We actually use this strategy in my company and we teach other MSPs to do it. And our clients have used this very successfully. All right. So let me just keep marching on there. Um, and, you know, when with all the marketing that we teach, I think another thing you need to know is um, – my background is is coming from a marketing agency. And so marketing agencies, by and large, and I'm talking about 99% of them, are basically glorified fulfillment centers. They're not they're not marketing consultants or strategists, okay? And there's a difference. So, for example, the last marketing agency that I worked for, they had a big team of graphic designers and media buyers, and they had some people who wrote copy, not many. But basically, companies would come to us, and we would do – we would, like, write their website – copy uh, and design and design their brochures and design direct mail, but then we would buy lists for them. We would buy media like radio space or TV space and, um, you know, even Google companies, pay-per-click companies, you know, you pay a percentage of your ad spend and they manage your account. But um, what, what they don't tell you is that they don't, they don't work with you on things like who is your target market? specifically and they don't work with you on well when you show up to this prospect what are you going to say that's going to knock out the incumbent provider that's going to make them want to do business with you how do you generate a lead what's the offer that is going to work best to overcome the we're fine we don't we already have an IT company like you've got to think about those things and most marketing firms don't so one of the things that when I created my company I wanted to focus on teaching and and arming my clients with the knowledge of how lead generation works and how do you pick a target market and how do you develop a unique selling proposition and then how do you build marketing systems using all kinds of media whether it's Google pay-per-click social media search engine optimization, direct mail, telemarketing, LinkedIn, seminars, trade shows, the gambit, right? Like I wanted to um, start with the correct foundation and then teach the media, right? But a question I get is what you're seeing here on the screen all the time is what's the one thing I should do to market my business? And it usually what they mean by that is what media, like should I do SEO? Should I do Google pay-per-click? Should I do telemarketing? Should I do, you know, most people don't ask about direct mail, but whatever, fill in the blank. Does LinkedIn work? And this question is asked in a lot of different ways. So people want to know, well, what's the thing I should focus on first? Or what's the single best way to get more clients? Or another way it's asked is like if Robin, if you had to start over again from scratch, what would you do different, right? So everybody wants to know what's the one thing. And I, and I want to caution you guys that there is no one thing that you have to get right and then everything else falls into place because getting clients, it's complex. It's complicated. I mean, that's why about 76% of our industry never breaks the million-dollar revenue mark. Because getting clients, it's difficult. It's complicated. That's why so many struggle with marketing. You look at any industry survey. Datto puts one out. Kaseya puts one out. We put one out. Ever, all these vendors in our space, they do the surveys, and they ask, what's the single biggest problem you're dealing with in your business? And year after year after year, everybody says marketing, meaning getting clients. And so it is a very – sophisticated, complicated problem, and you're not going to solve a sophisticated, complicated problem with a simple answer. Because if there was a simple answer, we'd all do it, and that wouldn't be an issue for everybody. So I want you to know, I am going to talk about the one thing. I am going to give you that one thing, but with the big caveat that it's going to take more than this one thing to really, you know, grow your business if you want to get to, you know, 5, 10, 20 million, um, you know, or even get beyond the million dollar mark. All right. So um, with that said, let me tell you the story of how I kind of discovered this one thing and how I found my niche. OK, so um, or niche, if you're I saw we had some people over from the UK. right? Um, and, and this is how I launched my business without any money. I didn't have a list. I didn't have a website. Um, so back in, if some of you guys right, might remember, in 2000, in 2001, there was a little incident um, that 9-11 uh, that happened, right? And so I was working for a marketing agency at the time, 
and uh, and I was in sales. So I was selling marketing services to various different kinds of businesses. Some were, were tech, but various biz- businesses. Um, I had earned a bonus, a really big bonus that they had put in front of me and uh, earned it in July of that year. And by the end of that year, they they still had not paid me and I pushed the issue. Um, and uh, without getting into a lot of the details, basically what they did is they fired me um, right after Christmas. So it was like when I really pushed the issue, I said, hey, you, and this is true story, guys. I mean, honest to God, it's a true story. They owed me the bonus. They didn't want to pay me. So they fired me to get me out of there. And I think, you know, at the time, right after September 11th, there was a lot of uncertainty. Sales were kind of tanking. Um, and I think they just were, they were, you know, struggling as a company. And, and so they were like, Hey, we're just, we can't pay you this bonus. We're just going to find a reason to fire you. And they did. Right. Um, so what happened was I was suddenly without a job and without any income. So the question really is, is, you know, what do you do when you have no money and lots of debt? And I had a lot of debt because I was really stupid with money. I actually, I've always, uh, you know, because I've been great at sales my whole life, I've always been able to earn a high income, but I was never smart enough to save the money. So every dollar I got plus 20% more, 30% more, I spent. So I was, uh, I had no income. I had a lot of debt. In fact, I ended up, I had something like six or seven credit cards that I was all juggling the debt on. I had no job opportunities lined up because I wasn't expecting to get fired at all. I mean, I wasn't like, it wasn't that I wasn't performing, um, and it, was, it wasn't like I wasn't hitting quota. Um, I had no clue where to how to start and run a business. I, you know, I was just, you know, caught flat-footed. I had no, of course, no business plan, no products or services to sell, no list, and I had no website or marketing for it to, or help. So, you know, I was I started to look for a job a little bit, but the job market was a little soft then because of obviously 9/11 had just happened. And so I had to do something, all right? So what I did is I asked myself two questions. And I asked myself, who do I know that has a relationship with a group of people I'd like to have as clients? Like, who can I leverage? Who might be able to hire me? Who might have an interest? And then what could I offer to do for them that would make them want to endorse me or at least, like, introduce me to their clients or their members, okay? So what I did is I just started calling everybody that I knew that in, that I could network with, okay? Now, my first success, and, and this kind of got me on the track of where I am today, is I had some contacts at CompTIA. So I had worked at a company called CGI Systems. I worked in their computer training division for a while. And, um, you know, part of what they did, if you guys remember the A-plus training, um, that was a CompTIA certification. So I knew some people at CompTIA. I'd actually done some marketing for them at the agency I was working with. So I reached out to them and I said, hey, why don't I do a free teleseminar? Because webinars weren't even a thing, right? It was all like teleseminars were like the hot new technology like Zoom is almost, right? And so I said, I'll do a free teleseminar on marketing for your members. And they said, sure, why don't you do that, right? Now, I did a very good job. I put my full effort into it, and it was so well received. I went back to them and said, hey, why don't you pay me to deliver this to your members for six months? It's a really good topic. People really like it. It'll engage your members. It'll make your members sticky and everything else, right? And and they said yes. They said, sure, we're, we're going to hire you. And um, I leveraged those six months doing these teleseminars. And I think I was doing them once a month, right? So I was doing one a month for six months. And then I spoke at the CompTIA breakaway at the end. That was all part of that package. And um, I started leveraging that into private clients. And I wasn't even marketing myself during these teleseminars because they were paying me to do it. Um, I just, just being exposed to those people without overtly selling without overtly trying to get them as clients, people just started emailing me going, hey, do you think you could help me with my marketing? Do you think you could help me um, with my website? Do you think you could help me with pay-per-click? And so I started picking up these private clients, and I got about 20 of them over that six-month period. And so then once once that started rolling, I started going, hey, you know, maybe this could be a business for me. And then I used that success with CompTIA to reach out to every other IT association group, media company. And I landed over that next year about 20 different speaking spots to various industry events. So seminars, some of them were teleseminars, some of them were just interviews and they put me in their magazine or, or whatever, et cetera. And so like 
when I say overnight, it really was about a year, a year and a half, but I had a flood of these new clients and opportunities knocking on my door. Um, and so the first full year I was in business, I did $750,000 in sales. I mean, that's, that's not too shabby from ground zero, no list, no website, no nothing. I mean, my website, even I had to barter, I bartered my services to get a web designer to design my site for free. And I helped her out with some stuff that she needed help with. So, I mean, like literally no money and doing this one strategy. So this one thing, in case you're wondering what it is, you kind of maybe got the gist of it. It's called JVs or joint ventures. Now, um, they're called a lot of different things. Some people call them strategic partnerships. Some call them a strategic alliance or a promotional partnership or a host beneficiary relationship, okay? And so what that is, all it is, high level. It's a promotional arrangement between two companies or two people for the purpose of realizing a mutual benefit. Okay. And so the key here is mutual benefit because the whole idea of getting somebody to introduce you to their clients, there's a lot of ways you can, you can twist this. Now with CompTIA, I offered the free teleseminar and then leveraged that, right? But they, they actually paid me to do it. So that's even better. So I leveraged this into getting them to pay me to get in front of their members, which was free promotion for me. So it's, that's even better. But there's been a lot of these. And I'm going to go through some examples where you can actually provide value. And they don't have to pay you a dime, but they are getting value and you get the benefit of, of being promoted to their list of clients or members. And, um, and they benefit from, from, a, from either increased sales, uh, from, uh, you know, from just providing value to their members and so forth. And I think as I go through, I'm going to show you several different um, iterations of this, of how you can approach people, how this could possibly work. And I think as you start to go through this, you're going to start seeing the genius in it. Because again, if you do this right, it doesn't cost you anything. And, um, and the reason that this is my favorite marketing strategy is number one, the leads, because they're referrals on steroids. So if, like if we, for, for example, we go back to the CompTIA example, right? Now I did a free teleseminar and then they paid me. But if I had gone and marketed to their list, may, let's say, um, I use Google pay-per-click, search engine optimization, direct mail, telemarketing, and I pursued their, the same members, right? That way they may, those people may not have been as interested in listening to me because I'm trying to get them as a client. But when CompTIA put me up on a pedestal, for lack of a better word, and said, hey, we have paid Robin to teach you guys how to do marketing, that, you know, I instantly got a bunch of people paying attention to me and it's like they refer, it's like referrals because basically they're saying we're endorsing you because they're, they're putting me in front of their, their clients and their members, right? So the leads are like referrals on steroids. And we all know referrals close at a higher percentage and they're easier to convert to a customer than it is like if you're doing Facebook ads or pay per click ads, right? Because of the relationship that you get to leverage. So these, these leads that come in from these JV partnerships, they're like referrals on steroids they help this helps you build a list fast and dirt cheap again when I did the teleseminar I mean it didn't cost me very much to set up a teleseminar be like you guys setting up a zoom meeting I mean yeah you got to pay for zoom and maybe you got to pay a graphic designer to design the website or something but it's dirt cheap and quickly you start building a list they provide excellent positioning again because like I said you know the the, the joint venture your host of the host beneficiary type relationship is endorsing you. So your position great. It elevates your image in the marketplace really, really fast for me because I didn't just stop with CompTIA. You know, I went to every industry association, every website, every vendor, and I started doing this. And so people started not just hearing about me from one vendor, but multiple. And very quickly I started to dominate my niche. And again, it wasn't costing me a ton of money to get the same lead generation juice out of it, I would have had to spend literally hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not a, a million dollars or more. I mean, and I'm not even joking because the, the, the way that I got promoted 
was just, I mean, it was phenomenal. You couldn't pay for that kind of advertising. And of course, then the, it reduces the cost per lead and cost per sale because you're getting basically leads for free. So some examples that I used, and I will give you examples of MSP. So hang tight with me. Don't check out, okay? So my, like right after I did the, the, the project with, with CompTIA, I went to ASCII. Because a lot of the people who were members of CompTIA were members of ASCII. And I remember MJ Shore, who uh, had um, – he's since sold his business, but he was the founder of Genelee Technology. He sold his business. Uh, but ASCII was very uh, – or MJ was very active and he in CompTIA, and he knew ASCII, and he loved my material. He became a private client, and um, and then he introduced me. So – I went to ASCII, and what I did is I offered to speak at their event for free. So on my own dime, I would fly across the country, pay for my hotel, pay for all my travel expenses. And the first year, I didn't have a big list, so I couldn't really do much marketing. But in the second, third, fourth, fifth year, I helped promote their events. And every event, I'd pick up anywhere from 15 to 30 new clients. Now, again, the cost to me was the cost for travel, for hotel, um, and then later on, I actually paid money to help them fill the events. But, you know, it was dirt cheap. And I did that for five years, um, got in front of multiple audiences. Um, you know, it, it got to a point where after five years, I mean, most most uh, most event companies don't have the same speaker for that long because, you know, they kind of get wore out a little bit because you start to you, you've been everybody's kind of seen you, which I get. It's fine. Um, and uh, so for that long is is like unbelievable because most people only have a speaker for one year. Um, the second really big uh, promotion I got is I delivered uh, this was to Kaseya, and this is long, long ago. This is when Gerald Blackie was the CEO. This is a long time ago. But I went to them, and I, I um, convinced them to do quarterly webinars. So I'd, every quarter, to, they would email their entire list, and I would do a webinar, and I did two speaking engagements. Um, and, and that promotion, that partnership, which, again, cost me nothing other than travel to their events to speak, but the but the teleseminars we did were, were like whatever it cost to do the the landline. They did all the emailing. They did all the promotion. They even had their sales reps calling. I didn't pay for any of that, and I got 148 new clients just off of that. Um, when Rob Ray was with Level Platforms, okay, here's another example. Um, what, and this is a really clever way. So let me. This is just one campaign. So again, I'll share with you what I did, but think about how you might be able to use this. So Rob had told us they were doing um they were going to be doing these little mini road shows right they were going around the country and uh they were going to do this and i talked to him i said hey are you doing any direct mail promotion for your road show events and he said no i said well i'll tell you what why don't you if you're open to it we'll write a letter i will pay for it so i paid for the, i wrote the letter i paid for the mailing of course a hundred percent was their approval. They mailed the letter to their list. I paid for the whole thing. I coordinated the whole thing. Now, I didn't get their list because that, that wouldn't have, you know, they didn't want to share that with me, which is fine. But then in the letter that went out, I put one of my CDs. So it was the letter was announcing three ways we're going to help you have your most successful year ever, right? And so one was, hey, there's a CD enclosed with Robin Robbins Marketing. We're going to give that to you. If you like what you hear, we're going to give you a discount on our program. And then we're also doing our um, our 18 uh, workshops. This is back in 2011. So I know this is old, but this is still a strategy I've used today. And this one promotion landed me 51 new customers. And what was beneficial to LPI was that they got their seminars promoted on direct mail for free because I paid for it. They got to give their partners that CD and a discount, which again, I absorbed those costs. So that is a mutually beneficial relationship. And Rob will tell you, he, I mean, he's openly said this, that he loves when when his members now he's at, now he's at Datto now we know that but when he was there and even at Datto he loves when his members his resellers are clients of ours because they sell more product right so that benefits the, him greatly um, and some of you guys might remember this guy Harry Brailsford and and again I'm going back to when I started my company so you guys I, I'm giving you examples of when I didn't have two nickels to rub together and this is what I was doing right but um, back we did. We did uh, pre-day sessions at SMB Nation for four years, and we generated 368 clients. 
And what we did is we just helped promote the event and confirm attendance. So again, when Harry was doing these, um, the first couple were at Microsoft and then um, then he moved it out of Seattle. I think the last couple were in, were in Vegas. But um, so anyway, but but he would I, I would say I, I approached him and said, hey, Harry, how about I do a an a pre event workshop? So it won't interfere with your conference at all. I will promote it to my list. So I'll promote SMB Nation because at that time, then I had a little bit of a list. I said, I'll do it for free. And, um, you know, I'll help you by promoting it. I'll pay for the direct mail and you can send it out. Because a lot of people are like, they don't want to email. But they, if you will pay for direct mail, they'll do direct mail. And so that's what I did. And this one promotion brought in uh, 368 clients. All right. Now, I want to show you some examples of how MSPs are using this. Okay. And again, guys, if you have any questions, you know, post that to the chat. Let me see here. Mike, do we have any questions I'm missing here? Uh, we just have one. Jason says, do you have to do this with other companies or, there, or are there other like um, associations and organizations? Well, you can do this with private companies or you can do it with associations. Okay. So, so let me let me show you this one example. This is John Matazzi. I think I'll answer this next. So thanks. I appreciate um keep keep the questions coming. So um but so like John is an M he's an MSP. He's in he's in Joplin, Missouri. Now he's a small MSP, I think when he first came to me, I think he was under a million, and I think today he's, he's three, four million or something like that. Um but Joplin's not a big town and he wanted to focus on the medical niche. But he only had two clients who were were doctor's offices, and he really didn't have a list. So we said, why don't we hold a lunch and learn seminar on backup and disaster recovery? Now, the reason you got to know that's a hot topic is because in Joplin, some of you don't know this, but several years ago, an F5 tornado went through Joplin downtown and wiped out a bunch of businesses. And so this was after that. So backup and disaster recovery became a very hot topic for that town. Um, and so that's why we chose that particular topic. All right. So the strategy was we, we asked his clients who were physicians, those two, where do you go to get information and connect with others in your industry? And that's, by the way, P.S., that's the question you go to your clients and you ask them. Where do you go to get information? Do you belong to any peer groups? Because what you want to do is you, you use your current clients to tell you what groups they belong to, and then you leverage that into getting an introduction. Now, I just gave you a very key strategy. So you use your existing clients, all right? So he did, and they said, hey, we belong to this association called the Medical Group Management Association. And so with his two clients who were doctors, he leveraged that, got them to introduce him, and he contacted them and he said, and this was what I told him to do, I said, why don't we do a lunch and learn uh, on security and backups for their members? And what we said we would do, if you will, MGMA, if you will promote this out, anybody who shows up to the session, we will pay their membership fees to the MGMA. Now, the reason that was so good was because the MGMA, they want, what do they want? They want members. They want paying members. And it was a benefit to everybody who would show up too. Hey, we're, we're doing this in conjunction with them. If you show up, we're going to give you good educational content. We're going to pay your membership. And I think at the time the membership was may maybe a hundred bucks, something like that. It was, it was pennies. Now, if you think about it, to get a, a prospect to attend a seminar you, I'm telling you, I know this. You will not spend a hundred bucks. You will spend five, six, seven, a thousand dollars to get a, a a prospect, a cold, cold prospect into a seminar seat. Okay, I'm telling you guys, you're not going to get it for a hundred bucks. So him getting a hundred bucks and only paying for those who showed up, he didn't have to pay for any of the marketing because what they did, they sent email invites to every doctor's office within a 40 mile radius, it was approximately 300, and he didn't have to pay for that. So they actively promoted his event for free and tried to get people to show up and he didn't have to pay for any of that. He just had to host the event. So he had qualified prospects coming into a seminar without having to do any of the marketing because the MGMA did it all. The hard costs were nominal and he's being endorsed by the industry's most influential association and initial sales were about $13,000 and um, those clients then upgraded to uh, larger service agreements. So in all that one, that one promotion generated $237,000 in sales. 
okay? And again, you could do that with the MGMA. You could do that with any association. You know, you just got to kind of understand what are the membership dues, what are their goals. Um, you might not even have to offer to do membership. I'm going to show you some more examples, okay? So let me give you another case study. Joe Smuro, who is with the Data Pros, he's an MSP. He's based in Lincroft, New Jersey, and he specializes in installing and supporting Microsoft cloud-based technology. So he only does Microsoft and he only does cloud-based tech. So if you have an on-premise server, he won't take his client, okay? Now, he has a Microsoft store in New Jersey that he developed a very, very good relationship. And through that partnership, was getting about three clients a month, okay? So what, what he did is the Microsoft store in his area, in case you guys aren't, you know, and I, I don't know what the status is of Microsoft stores today, but, you know, back then, he would, there was um, Microsoft, you know, only the store was really focused on consumers. They didn't, they really weren't equipped to handle business, but Obviously, occasionally, businesses would walk in wanting the Microsoft Store to help them migrate to the cloud, right? And they had to turn down that business. But then when Joe got in there and did this partnership, basically, they were then referring those clients to him because they knew Joe was a Microsoft shop, and they knew he only supported and installed Microsoft technologies, and he was um, selling, you know, um, Office 365 at the time, I think it's just, I just think it's, um, I think it's just 365 now or whatever they changed the name to. So um, we, I said, look, we got to facilitate this. So we created this flyer so that any time a business owner walked in, the sales reps that were in the store, they didn't know, have to know how to pitch Joe or tell him how great he was. All they had to do was hand them this. And it was a free migration plan for migrating wherever they were to um, Office 365. And so you could see there's the offer and the testimonial at the bottom was the uh, this business sales specialist at the Microsoft store, okay? So the back of the flyer was really good too. It's five reasons why you wanna use the data pros for Office 365 migration and it featured some uh, client success stories. So again, th this was a very, very good promotion, all right? And he was getting about, like I said, about three clients every month and it was the cost of a flyer. Now he also spent time there in the store, he got to know people, he, he was doing uh, seminars I believe and the, the store had like a, a, a venue in the back and so he could even hold workshops there. So it was a very good mutually beneficial relationship, okay? Let me give you another strategy. So um, well, Joe also had a good relationship with this fiber internet company called Light Tower. And Light Tower has since been sold. But um, they agreed to promote Joe to their client base because they, they weren't competitive. They sold fiber internet, right? And so they had a bunch of clients. Well, let me ask you this. How do you, how does a fiber, how does the internet provider, whoever it is, how do they get you to spend more money with them? Do they just go, hey, we're gonna, we want you to upgrade your bandwidth. I know your bandwidth is fine and it's working, but pay us more money and we'll make you faster. We'll give you more bandwidth. Well, that's a really tough sale, right? Especially if the bandwidth's fine. So the way that they could get more bandwidth sold is if Joe sold them, you know, this the cloud-based tech and Skype and the, the phone, a voice over IP phone, instantly they need more bandwidth. So they loved it when Joe would go in and sell their clients this, this you know, cloud-based tech because they instantly needed more bandwidth. So I said, Joe, we got to formalize this. So we created um, this free to light tower customers to show them how to migrate to Office 365. Of course, it's not, I know it's changed, the name's changed a little bit, but it's a win-win relationship. And then we even did an email. So this was a letter, but he did emails as well. We did a cover letter and we got light tower to mail the letter to all of their customers and endorse them. So there was an email and then there was a letter, okay? So again, this is a perfect example of a good, mutually beneficial relationship. Non-competitive companies, they both win, everybody wins. The customer wins, Light Tower wins, Joe wins. It's, it's, it's a triple win, okay? So it's a really good strategy. I'll give you another one. Uh, Fred Sagister, Sagister Associates. Um, we did similar to what, uh, what um, John Matazzi did with the MGMA, but instead he found a, a partner in the dental niche, okay? And they were a, um, they, it wasn't the MGMA, they basically did like all the supplies for dental, dental practices. And so they did a JV partnership 
Um, they paid for the seminar. Um, they signed up 48 dental practices to this. And si so far, um, this is, and this happened actually right before shutdowns. Um, but he could do it with a webinar. I mean, it just happened to be a seminar. But don't don't let that weird you out or anything. I mean, you could do this with a webinar. He had seven of them sign up as clients and overall added $2.5 in sales using this JV approach. I'll give you another example. Uh, Joanna Sober in MXO Tech. Joanna um, did a self-published book with us because we also do self-published books for our clients. Um, and so she did a book launch party. And what I encouraged her to do is is have a big book launch and sell sponsorship. So she's actually she she sold forty five hundred dollars in sponsor money and uh, two thousand dollars speaking engagement. And what she did is she found a strategic partner who purchased the books to give to all their members. It was an association. I forget I forget the name of it. Right. And they um, she even went to a, an art gallery. So this is another way of a JV. She went to an art gallery that was typically closed in the in the later evening right and so she went to the art gallery and said hey if i do a book signing and i bring about 50 to 60 business owners in to do a book signing they'll walk around the gallery they'll look at the art you could sell your art while we're all there would you let me have the vent the, the space for free and they said yes because the benefit to them is now they had like i think she ended up with like 60 or 70 business owners that came to the book signing they're all walking around the art gallery she had sponsors who paid like they had wine and cheese and whatever right so they got this wine and cheese it was a book signing it was a good pr she got sponsorship dollars and she got somebody to buy copies of the book and give them out to all of their clients okay so you can see there's multiple jv partnerships baked in that let me give you another one Tom Glover, who's uh, Pineland Congentis, he's just he's just um, changed the name of his company. I think it's Responsive IT Partners now. But early when the shutdown started happening, um, I was coaching my clients to use this approach, and he went to the local chamber and said, um, "Would you uh, promote the fact that we are we will help any of your members go remote?" for free. So it was basically saying, look, if you're stuck right now because everybody's going into lockdown and you cannot get your employees to work from home remote, give us a call. Because you're a chamber partner, we're going to help you out for free. All right. So 20 companies and 90 users came to him, um, you know, through this promotion, through the chamber. And um, one big, large transportation company was in that mix and is now um, talking to them. So, again, the benefit to the chamber, the chamber is looking for ways to help their community who's going into this lockdown and this scrambling. And here comes Tom saying, look, we'll help your partners. We'll help your members for free. Just let them know we exist and have them call us. And he ended up getting 20 new companies that he was now engaged with. And this is during the pandemic and shutdown. And I know Tom just told me this last year, he grew 40% organically from just this kind of promotion. I'll give you another example. Now, this is Scott Beck. Scott's up in Canada. So, um, again, at my encouragement i told my members to do this i said when you once the covid uh, shutdowns were happening i said start posting resources about how to work from home how to use zoom how to be secure all these things right and so he posts this up and he had the deputy mayor of his town promote him via social media now where in the world would you be able to pay for that kind of advertising but see the benefit was this lady, her name is uh, Tammy Rampersod, I think it's pronounced. You know, she, her, all the politicians, just like the chamber, the local government wanted to help their businesses in any way they could. So if anybody was offering resources, they promoted that out to their community. So he was able to do that for free. Peter Valeza, another member of mine, went to his local chamber um, and they did a Zoom meeting webinar. And what you know, what Peter was talking about was how to remain online against cyber threats, how to, and he knew about the stimulus package and the PPP loans and so forth. So the chamber promoted him out to all of their members for free, for free. Okay. He also did this with the MGMA. He went to them and again, did the same exact webinar. They promoted it to all their, their members for free. All right. So, um, Mike, I'm just curious, 
Do we have any other questions so far now that I've given some examples? There aren't other questions yet. Uh, we got someone on here who said they remember back, they started in 2001 as well, and so they knew a lot of your examples and everything. But mm -hmm. uh, just feel free to post your questions in here if you guys have questions, and we'll make sure to answer them. Okay. So, yeah, so these are just, I mean, there's a lot of different ways. So let me, let me talk to you a little bit. How do you get started? Okay. So if you like this idea, and who wouldn't, getting clients for free, right? Because that's really what you're getting. You're getting leads for free and clients for free, um, other than a little bit of work, maybe a little bit of money. Um, but the, the step one is you've got to make a list of who could be a good partner for you. All right. So questions to ask yourself, what non-competitive companies do I know that have a client base similar to mine? Because you don't want so, for example, I've had in the past, I, I teach this, this is a strategy I, I teach. Um, so I've had a client, one, this is a while ago, I had a client who took this approach um, to a local internet provider. And the local internet provider, unfortunately, was mostly home users. So you, he ended up getting a lot of leads, but they were home users, and that's not who he wanted. Now, if that's who you want, that'd be perfect. So you got to remember, when you're, when you're thinking about who you want to partner with, you want to think about who has the client base similar to yours and who has a client base that might be struggling to generate revenue right now. Because here's another strategy, and that is you could say to your partner, for every client you bring me, I will pay you X, whatever X is. Okay, and I'll give you an example of that. So we launched Big Red Virtual, which is a virtual event platform this, year, this past year because of all the shutdowns and we had to do virtual, okay? Now, who was, the event industry was hit really hard, and one of two, two event people, two companies that have been hit really, really hard are people who broker speakers because there weren't many events going on. And so, I mean, like the one guy, we deal with a couple event companies, you know, um, or speaker bureaus, and the one guy had to, had to lay off like 98% of his staff. I think he kept one person on, right? So he's got no revenue coming in, right? So we went to him and said, look, you know all these people who run events. You don't have any income. If you show them our platform or make the introduction, we're going to pay you. And I forget what the refiner's fee or referral fee, but it was a big, fat, big, fat one. And he was all over it because it was, it was something he could sell to get some revenue and not even sell. He just had to introduce us. He already had the client base, so it didn't cost him anything to send emails. Um, he already had the relationships. It gave him something to talk about. It would help his clients. And P.S., if they had a virtual event, they needed speakers. So he put them back in the game. So that's an example of how we looked for people who could, who could resell our services or at least make the introduction and, and line their pockets a little bit. Another group that got hit really hard were event AV companies. Like our, our AV company, you know, we went to them and said, look, you have a bunch of clients. Wouldn't you like them to have virtual events? And then you know how to run the virtual AV. And they walked us into multiple accounts. One of them, one of our big accounts we have right now as a client is the Travel and Adventure Show. And that's a client of mine because they use our, our, our platform, our media platform, our, our event platform. And that was because of a JV partnership. So think about that. Who benefits when you get a client? So just like Light Tower benefited when Joe got a client or Microsoft Store benefited when Joe gets a client, who benefits when you get a client? That's why LPI, Rob Ray or Data or, or Kaseya, they benefit when we get clients because we teach them how to do marketing. So they like to refer us to their customers. What associations and member groups have a client base similar to yours or ones that you want to get into? I've given you some examples of that. Which clients would be open to promoting you to their clients and network? Because you might have a customer who actually has customers that could benefit from you. So let's say you have a CPA. I have, um, I have some clients that do really, really well with CPAs. Um, and they, their CPAs promote them to all their other clients. So they get in that way. What vendors would be open to promoting you to their clients and networks? And maybe your bank, maybe your printing company. I don't know, any local vendors, your local CPA they might be interested in promoting you. So a good list of uh, potential partners with, again, your clients, your vendors, like your CPA, landlord, your bank, financial advisor, commercial real estate brokers. I'll give you another example on this one. 
I had another, I have another client that does a JV with commercial real estate and he's got a relationship with the largest commercial realtor in his area. And so when they lease a building, one of the things that the new tenant needs to do is the cabling and wiring and the internet and all the infrastructure, right? Cause you got to have that done. So he does the work. He does that work for the real estate company at cost. They mark it up and sell it to their tenant. Now they don't care. They don't want to do the rest of the MSP. So they make money when, and they require their tenants to use this guy because they know this guy knows what he's doing. He won't screw up the walls. You know, he does a good job and they can mark it up and they can make a little money on it. Right now he gets walked into a client for doing the work at cost. So he's not making any money on it, but he had so far last time I talked to him, he is closing 100% of the clients he's being introduced to, 100% are becoming managed services clients. So commercial real estate brokers, landlords, they might be good companies, smaller MS, uh, ISPs, internet service providers, outsourced for service firms, like we're talking about uh, CPAs or people doing HR and payroll and web design, uh, companies selling phone systems and office machines, but maybe not IT services, you could partner up with them, prominent consultants who work in your niche, um, your clients, vendors, and suppliers, or insurance sales professionals, and people selling cyber liability or crime insurance or trade associations, okay? So these are all the different people you could reach out to that could be potential partners. The second thing you want to do after you make the list is figure out how you can help them. So how can you help them secure more clients, more revenue, more, more profits? Is there a way to help them sell more services? And I'll give you an example. So Bob Mitchie, this is Bob Mitchie, Metro MSP. Um, Bob came to me, and this is a happened a little while ago, and um, we were on a consulting call, and he was looking for some ways to, uh, to, to generate more revenue. So we came up with the idea. I said, why don't you reach out to your – I think he had like two or three clients that were insurance – providers. I said, why don't you ask them if they would do a promotion, a co-webinar or seminar with you, right? And so um, he did. So he reached out and, and basically he said to his, his insurance guy, he says, hey, do you sell cyber liability or crime insurance? And they said, yeah. And he goes, do you want to sell more of it? And they said, yeah. He said, all right, here's what you're going to do. You're going to invite all your clients to a seminar I'm going to deliver a talk on cyber, cyber crime and what's going on. It's going to scare the crap out of them. And they're all going to run to the back and buy your crime insurance. And, and I'll, all I'd like to do is offer them a cybersecurity assessment. Okay. So he, this is the, this is the first picture of him doing the first event. So all those people that you're looking at are clients of the first insurance professional he did this with. They, it's his office. It's his clients, and he did all the marketing. And so he, this was from an email. He said, I survived the seminar. 22 of 24 registered people showed up. He had one appointment, about $7,000, and two, three appointments to repeat the seminar for other JVs following up this week. So that was right after he did it. So since then, he held 11 co-promoted seminars. He did insurance agents, he, attorneys, two bar associations. He had added over 400 email addresses to his list. And uh, last time I talked to him, he had $209,000 in sales, and he and landed one additional agreement for $25,000 per month in MRR. All right? So what he was doing was basically helping insurance professionals sell more cyber liability and crime insurance and he was still getting introduced to all these new prospective clients. And the essential pitch is, if I had a way to conservatively add, and again, you have to kind of noodle this out. So you got to figure out, like, if what, what are you going to pay this person, right? If I had a way to conservatively add twelve to $36,000 in new net bottom line profits to your business over the next six months that would not cost you anything, would not require you to hire additional staff, invest in overhead, or put a strain on your current resources, and would be completely non-competitive to your business, would you be opposed to hearing about it? So that's kind of Bob's pitch to the insurance professional, but it doesn't have to be just insurance professionals. It could be anybody, anybody you know who has a list, who has clients. Okay, I'll give you another example of what I'm talking about here. Brian Hamilton, Mid-Atlantic Data and Communications. He's a client of mine. Um, he did a, a JV partnership with a company 
that does, um, it's the software company that runs the machines in furniture manufacturers and in manufacturing plants, right? So you can see these are, he loves to message me on Facebook, right? So you can see, um, landed another $5,200 MRR. Um, there was a medical facility for whatever said yes today. Um, that makes $7,800 in new MRR on JV partnerships off a crazy trip I took to Dallas four weeks ago because the company he did the JV with was down in Dallas. So he traveled down there. Um, so then I said, well, what does that put you at? It's $11,000 a month. And this was literally after a, you know, four weeks, five weeks after he did the partnership, he already has $11,000 in new MRR. Cost to him, nothing other than he did a little revenue share. So he would have paid for that anyway. But imagine paying just commission. It's like a commission-only salesperson. You're not having to pay the marketing. You're just getting walked into accounts. And that's what this JV partner is doing. They're walking him in to accounts. All right. So you got to figure out how you can help him. How can you help him secure more money? Um, you might also just be able to reinforce an agenda, a message or an idea. So I have another client here in actually in um, north of Nashville in Tennessee. They have gotten their local bank to promote them to all their business clients. And what they do, they've done seminars and webinars on cybersecurity and how to protect your bank account from cybercrime. Now the bank is not paying them and, and they're not paying the bank because I think legally they can't. But the bank is endorsing their, their seminar because they want to keep their business clients protected from cybercrime. And so they're, they're reinforcing and teaching their clients how to stay safe online, right? How to do good passwords, two-factor authentication, yada, yada, right? So that could be another reason why they would promote you. Can you help them increase the retention of members? Maybe minimize losses. Like, like that's what I was talking about. When I, did, uh, when I was doing that seminar with CompTIA, that's, that's what we were doing. When you see the other examples of MSPs going to the chamber or the Medical Group Management Association, and they're offering to do these seminars for free, it's helping them retain their members and minimize the loss of losing members because if they can keep their members engaged, then they win, right? So that's what they're helping. Can you provide useful information, content, training, um, resources to their clients or their members? And can you co-promote an event and just share the, the cost or the burden of marketing and filling, whether it's a virtual seminar room or later on when we get back to it in person, okay? So what's important is don't overlook the fact some people may simply want to endorse you because they like you and they believe in you and they want to help you. And if you have good content, about cybersecurity, compliance, whatever it is, how to work remote, people want that information. They'll help you get that information to their clients and members. All right. So then step three, you, you, you got to figure out, you know, who, who's your short list of potential JV partners. That's one. Step two, you got to figure out how you can help them. And three, how are they going to promote you? So again, webinars, they invite their members or clients to hear you speak or seminar, same as above if your area is starting back with events. You know, some areas are having networking events. They are, it, things are opening up in certain areas. I know others aren't, but believe it or not, there are seminars going on right now. Some of you might not believe that. Um, endorse mailings, an email or a snail mail to their list. That was kind of the examples I showed you what I did, where they actually, in Light Tower, same thing, where they might email their list or mail their list. That's called an endorsed mailing. Um, you could ride along with their sales reps to existing accounts. Sometimes they could just walk you in with them in their media. If they have a newsletter, a website, a catalog, member portal, social media, or they could simply email their clients talking about you and an offer. Maybe you extend a network assessment or a free dark web scan or something like that, right? So these are all ways that they can promote you to get their, your message to their, their members or their clients, all right? Now, how do you promote, how do you approach a JV partner? Well, you want to do an initial pitch, and the key to it is you want to have brevity. You don't want to puke your guts all, hey, we're going to endorse each other, blah, 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 blah. You know, no, that's not what you want to do. Make it personally customized. Don't do a one-size-fits-all. Um, when I am talking to JV partners, 
I personally write the email or the LinkedIn message or the whatever or make the phone call. Like I don't do a, a broadcast. Like I make it very personal. I want to talk because I want to tie it into a known initiative. I, I want to talk to them about something I think that they're going to be interested in or some way I can help them. I focus on benefits, not all the details of we're going to do a webinar or something like that. I don't want to get into that. You want to contain social proof propose an idea. You don't want to ask for money or talk about your services because they might think you're trying to get them write a check or something. You don't want to do that. And you want to, the, the key is you want to ask for a brief, like 10 minute call because you just want to get them excited about your, your idea in the initial outreach. You're not trying to sell them. You're not trying to get them to make a decision. You're not trying to get in all the details. Okay. So I'll give you an example. This is an example of, uh, this is, I, I've used this on LinkedIn. I've used this as an email. And again, everyone is different because I personalize it, but it just, I wanted to give you an idea. All right. So this is your CRN interview. Um, recently read about your partner program on CRN. It prompted me to write you briefly. I believe I have a way to get more of your partners to finally start implementing effective marketing campaigns that is like unlike anything you've tried before. But first, let me introduce myself. There's a paragraph just introducing that's to build my credibility because I'm this person I'm reaching out to cold. Okay, in this case, um, because I know you're looking for ways to make your partner successful. I wanted to see if you'd be open to a brief 10 minute call to run an idea by you that I have found to be extremely effective in getting partners more engaged, more successful in their marketing, their services. And I can practically guarantee it's something you haven't heard, seen or heard before. So if you're not against a brief call, please respond back to this email with a couple times. You can call me direct. I mean, it, you can see it. So this is a template I used for cold outreach and I used LinkedIn and it worked really well. Now, why did I use LinkedIn? Because I didn't have everybody, if it was cold, I didn't have everybody's email address, right? So I used LinkedIn, I used the in-mail. Um, you'll notice that we didn't, I didn't pitch the project. I didn't say, hey, you're going to do a webinar and you're going to endorse me. I didn't get into all that, right? Just the result. And, you know, don't spill the beans in this initial contact because you want to have the curiosity factor in play, right? And it's important that when you approach your partner, you want to have somewhat of an idea or plan, but be flexible about how you actually partner with them, okay? So, you know, for example, you might call them up and say, you know, I've got, an, I've got a really good talk on cybersecurity and protecting how to work remote and protect yourself, keep your company protected. And I just thought, you know, as, um, as a local bank, I know that you've got a lot of people that are now working remote and you want to protect them from people getting access to their account and stealing money from their account. And I just thought if you want, I could do this completely free for you, something like that, right? But they might say, hey, you know, we don't want to do a webinar, but they might be willing to to distribute a free report you have. And if that's great, then great, you know, use the free report. That's what I mean, just, you, you wanna get on the call with them and, and kind of pro, like give them an idea, but then see what lights them up and what they're interested in. So you have to be able to pitch your idea without it coming across uh, as though you're asking to be endorsed. You know, you want it to come across as though you're providing value always think of how you can provide extreme value to the other person. That's what you want to think about. Why would they be interested in? And right now, content that you might have on cybersecurity, remote, remote workplace productivity, compliance, these are all hot topics. And this will open a lot of doors. So if you can do a, if you had a free report, if you had a survey, if you had a checklist, if you had a webinar or something that you could do on those topics, a lot of people will say, yeah, let's do a webinar to my, to our list, our audience, our members, our clients about this. And that's all, that's all free leads and free marketing exposure for you. And I can tell you that the hardest one's going to be the first one, because after that, once you get one, you leverage it. So um, even at the beginning of this year, back in March, April, when all the shutdowns were happening, um, everybody was like, what do we do? What do we do? You know, how do we do marketing right now? So I put together a really good presentation on how to do marketing during the pandemic and the shutdowns, how to change your marketing, what approach to take, what message, what offers, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I, I did that. Then I went to all of our vendors. I must've done at least, I don't know, 15, 17 webinars 
for and where they emailed their entire list and said, hey, Robin's going to do this seminar. I mean, that was my marketing in, in the f first half of this year. I got all these JV partners because it was a hot topic. It was on the top of everybody's mind. And right now, it's still we're still in shutdown. We're still in lockdowns. And there's a lot of uncertainty. People think there's going to be more lockdowns. So if you can put together a report, a checklist, um, a, a webinar on these topics, that's what makes this so powerful because people will endorse you. They'll do these webinars with you. Even if you did a webinar on how to use Zoom, do a webinar on how to do webinars, right? A lot of people don't know how to do those. And you just have to be a little bit smarter to know how the tech and how to use Zoom or how to use go, go to webinar, okay? So, uh, Mike, real quick questions at all about any of this or comments? Oh no! People are saying that they really like the strategy and then the the template. I guess we do have one question about the. They said they didn't understand what the essential pitch was. They were listening, but then I think they kind of came in at the end of that whole idea. Well, I mean, there's there's a lot of ways you could pitch it, but the one where, you know, like with what I the example I showed with Bob Mitchie or with Brian Hamilton, the pitch is like, look, if I can add revenue to your business where it's not you don't have to do any marketing like it's it's not going to it's not com going to compete with you you don't have to hire staff you don't have to deliver the product you don't have to do anything other than send out some emails to your client base and promote this webinar and anybody i get i'm going to add i'm going to give you a percentage that's basically what that pitch is that's the you know that's and and you know what business owner is not going to say yes to that you know, it's like cause yeah, and I think if, that's where confusion yeah. might have okay. been. It's the pitch to to do the webinar. It's not like the pitch on the webinar or anything. Right, right. It's like it's what you're the message when you're going to your potential partner. You're you're like they all. So think of it this way: every business has spent a, a, an extreme amount of time, money, and effort to get their client base, right? So they, you know, however big it is or, or their members, all right? Now, they are limited, if you will, if you want to use a word, they're limited to selling those people what they sell, right? So like you take the chamber of commerce or, or take the insurance company. So the insurance guys, you know, it was kind of a twofold benefit to them. The insurance company is going, well, we can sell these guys insurance products, right? Well, if Bob Mitchie can come in, scare the bejesus out of him about cybercrime, which it's just all he's doing is telling him what's going on. I mean, it's not even like fake. He's not like fear monger. He's just saying, here's what's happening. Um, and then they all go, oh, my God, I need to buy cyber insurance or crime insurance. I mean, like he's generating sales for them for like for free. Now, the other the other example would be like with Brian Hamilton that that furniture manufacturer the guy who's selling software he's got he has hundreds of clients all over the united states and they all have his software now if they they're they're using this furniture software but he doesn't want to be in the msp business but what he can do is he can go to his clients walk brian in and say hey you know what brian is a really good it company if you need help man this guy's the bomb he knows what he's doing he'll do a great job you ought to get just let him do an assessment let him look at your network let him give you a quote now if brian closes that deal he's giving a percentage of the mrr to this software manufacturer now what is the cost of that software manufacturer it's like nothing he always he's having this guy's having him, his sales reps just to introduce him that's all they're doing and so it doesn't cost them they don't have to hire anybody to do it it doesn't compete with what they do um it's a it's a pure profit stream i mean they don't have to hire people they don't have to make anything they don't have to deliver anything they just have to make an introduction it's a way for that furniture manufacturer to monetize their client base without having to do anything other than an introduction you see and then when you put it to somebody like that they go Hey, you're right. You know, especially right now, people are hurting for business. They might have a client base that they can't sell to or are limited to sell to like our speaker bureau client. Now, he's walking us into accounts because we gave him something that he he can make money on and it gets his clients doing events again so he can get paid that way. So that's when I say you the, you want to think about how you can how you can 
do these kind of uh, engagements, right? And get people to endorse you. And it's, I'm telling you, it's easier than you think. It's a lot easier than you think. All right. Did I answer it, Mike? Did I? Yeah, that, that's perfect. And uh, we've got uh, two more good questions in here, but I think, uh, why don't we just uh, answer those in just a minute? Okay. So let me, let me just real quick. Um, so we're, we'll get to questions as many as you want. And the question right now is, are you ready to implement a marketing plan? Maybe you want to implement this idea. And this is just one of idea. I mean, JVs is just one strategy that I teach in a lot of different strategies for MSPs. But what I want to just do real quick is give you guys a free resource and it is free. It's the ultimate guide to MSP and IT services marketing. Um, and it comes with a consultation. So if you go to technologymarketingtoolkit.com forward slash consult, Mike, if you could just maybe put that in the chat, um, what you get in there with this, you get the free consultation, plus there's a ton of free gifts that I'm going to give you that's not just about JVs, but just marketing in general. So um, one of the things that I want to give you is our proprietary marketing roadmap for implementing a productive marketing plan for your IT services business. And what this does is it shows you step one, step two, step three, kind of where to start, what to do next, what to do next, what to do next. And this roadmap, I've, this is like two decades in development. So I can, I can tell you that this is, if you're wondering, like, I don't even know where to start with a marketing plan, this is going to clarify that for you. The next thing I'm going to give you, there's a report we put together called the Ultimate Guide to Marketing Lead Generation IT Service Sales. Um, it's sort of a combination of, a, of my best articles on this topic, and I know you're going to find this to be extremely valuable. I'm also um, going to give you, there's a 90-minute webcast that training that I did on how to set up autopilot marketing systems so that you can consistently get three to five brand new high-profit managed service clients every month. And the key really is autopilot. I think many of you don't know the concept, we teach a concept called marketing oil wells, where you set up campaigns that run on autopilot instead of constantly having to come up with new campaign here and another one here and what's the next campaign. What's, see, that's the most wasteful, stupid way to do marketing. And if that's what you're doing, you know, don't, you got to stop doing that. It's just, it's wasteful. Um, and, and I don't have to, I mean, I did 90 minutes on that topic. So what they are, how to set them up, what are the essential components to it? We're going to give you that. Plus, um, I'm going to give you how to build your IT service sales, sales playbook. And again, another thing you're going to need, maybe some of you don't have salespeople, um, but if you are going to grow your business or if you're going to be doing the sales, you need to have a playbook. You need to have a blueprint of how do you close a sale? And if, and if you don't, most people don't even know what goes into that sales playbook. So that's what this report is about. So you can close sales faster without discounting. Um, I hate stupid sales tactics. I'm not, a, I, I really don't believe in, you know, I, I like trying to shove your proverbial foot in the doors. They're slamming it. Like, I don't like that. And I don't want to do a lot of convincing because I have learned if you have to do a lot of convincing to get a client, you're probably not going to be happy with the client after you get them. All right. So the, you're going to get that. There's also an audio I did um, on how to double leads. It's I really dig deep into lead generation strategies for IT services business. Um, it was an interview somebody did with me and, um, it turned out actually better than I thought. It was like one of those kind of impromptu, somebody wanted to interview me. And so I'm going to give you that. Um, and then you're going to get a one-on-one -on -one consultation. So one of my program consultants will discuss your situation, your needs, your budgets, and make a recommendation of how we might be able to help you. And I, I do mean might. Like I'm not going to say how we can help you because I don't know anything about you. I don't know your situation. Um, I don't know what your goals are, preferences. And so, you know, at the, the consultation, um, you're going to know a couple things. And at the end of that consultation, you'll know really how does your IT services revenue, your growth, your stability, your overall business health kind of stacks up against your peers. Like, are you on par? Are you below, above? Are you making progress compared to your peers? Um, and also, like, how well could you weather the storm if, if we really go into a deep recession? Because we are a little bit, but we, it could get a lot worse. Or if you lost a major account or if an aggressive, well-funded competitor moved in your territory or if you had a personal crisis. So we're going to talk about that. 
exactly where are your biggest opportunities right now to plug the holes in your sales bucket? What opportunities are you overlooking? What specific aspects of your business and marketing strategy are you in, in direst need of repair, if you will? And what should she do about fixing them? So they're going to talk to you about that on the consultation. And then third, whether or not enrolling in one of our programs is appropriate for you and which one will help you achieve your goals. And if, if you do decide that, hey, I'd like to work with us and we'd love you to, um, you, you know, how do our programs work? How do you participate? What's required of you? What's done for you? What's done with you? All those questions are going to be answered. But I could tell you this. Um, you know, we have a couple different programs we recommend, again, based on your situation. So I don't have like a, a one size fits all. I mean, you could buy the toolkit off the website, but honestly, I'd recommend you get on a consultation because it's better if we can kind of assess your situation. Um, but my program, no matter what we recommend, the one thing I'm going to show you is how you, how to never fall victim to being an, to an advertising salesperson again, because I'm going to show you how to hold them accountable for delivering results. And that's including me. I'm, I'm including myself in that because, again, when people come to us, these smaller IT firms, MSPs, VARs, you know, typically, you know, they've been writing checks for years. They tried SEO or they paid somebody $10,000 to revamp their website and the website's still not generating leads or they tried social media or they hired a pay-per-click person or they hired a marketing manager. And it's like, they just go along their whole life writing check after check after check, and they're just frustrated because they can't get anything to work. And that's because you don't know what good marketing is. So I'm going to I'm going to arm you with the knowledge so you don't make those bad mistakes. I'm going to show you how to enjoy that steady flow of prospects that are calling into your office. Um, yeah, I'll give you the power. This is one of the best things is to be a lot pickier about who, who you accept as a client and only accept the ones that appreciate your services because a lot of you are because you don't have a good marketing system and you don't know how to sell. You end up saying yes to clients that you know you really ought not say yes to. So once you get those clients, the better clients, you're going to be able to fire those whiny, cheap, annoying clients and replace them with ones that are more well-behaved, that appreciate your services. You know, I'm going to show you how to build the business so you can take vacation. Maybe a little time off would be nice without the wheels falling off. And, you know, part of that is being able to grow your business and afford to hire people to take all that grunt work off your plate so you have the confidence to, you know, to get them fully utilized and, and you know you can get the clients to support that so you're not having to hire a tech and then all your profitability goes away. And Mike, I'm, I'm hearing a little feedback on your line there, so I don't know if you're on mute. But um, also, how to overcome price resistance, how to avoid uh, having to negotiate or discount or change your, your recommendations and your advice to win a client or stop doing low pay grunt work. Also, how to stop making bad decisions about marketing and wasting your time and money. So all of those things um, are what my program is going to make possible for you. And of course, JVs, what we talked about is just one of the strategies in the toolkit. So again, I, you know, I don't know if the toolkit plus the toolkit plus maybe a rapid implementation workshop or something else would be better for you. Um, but if you do uh, want to use J JVs, if you enroll in my program, all the templates from the examples I showed today, I'm going to give you the PowerPoint presentations, reports, and other content you can use to approach your, you know, your JV partners for webinars and seminars, LinkedIn and email templates for reaching out to those partners. Um, you get support from me and my team on how to implement the idea and see it through to its successful completion. Um, and we have a number of recorded how-to sessions from the, the people I showed you, the case studies, who have used this strategy and they are going to talk about how they're doing it. Of course, the, the templates as well for the endorsed mailings that I talked about as well. So if you decide after the consultation to enroll in the toolkit, you know, you're going to get all that as well. But where you want to start is you want to start by signing up for that free consultation because that's what's really going to, you know, we can decide for you and help you get the right program, the right support based, again, on your specific goals, your situation, your budget, your experience, how many years you've been in business, all those, all those factors. Okay. So anyway, Mike, let's see, do we have more questions? Yeah, we got a couple of great questions in here. Uh, so okay. I hope I'm saying it right. Shahik uh, says, what, what's the cost of MRR you should give to the JV partner? 
Well, I mean, everything's up for negotiation, okay? And so the first thing I would say is you don't always have to give any. Um, so, you know, that's entirely up to you. Um, another strategy you could do is you could give them the first month. So that's in, in a lot of MSPs, when they, when they have hunter salespeople, they give them the first month. So if they sell a thousand dollar a month contract, like a, th a three year for a thousand dollars a month, they pay the, 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 um, salesperson a thousand bucks and then they keep the rest. Um, you could do the same with your JV partner. You could, um, you could offer them, you know, 5%, 10% of the revenue for one year. I mean, it's all negotiable, but you just got to make sure if you're giving them a percentage for a year, let's say, I wouldn't do it in perpetuity, but if you did it for a year, then what I would do is you just got to make sure you mark up your, your prices a little bit to cover that cost. All right. So it's, again, everything's up for negotiation. Okay, and then we got the question in here. Um, how could you use this with like a law firm? Um, well, you know, you go to a. I mean, again, you depends on the law firm. So, um, you know, if they are doing, let's say they're doing employment law, because you know the type of law they're practicing would matter. So again, remember I said like you want to pick people who have similar clients. You you might not want to go to a personal injury attorney because who's the personal injury attorney going to have his clients? Well, it may be some business owners in there, but not likely many. So let's say you go, you want to pick a law firm that has clients that are business owners. And let's say they're an employment law law firm, okay? Well, you could do a webinar for their clients on how to keep employees productive during shutdowns, how to keep their employees from surfing porn sites, from using uh, the company's email uh, inappropriately, um, you know, how to, how to make sure um, that they're secure online. So, you know, that because a, a law firm that's doing HR, you know, there's a lot of things like, can you track and monitor what people do online? And, um, and you can, but again, depends on the state, but a lot of, a lot of employers don't know how to do that. They don't know how to keep an eye on their employees to see, Hey, you know, make sure this guy's not going online. Um, or eat like, you know, I've, I've had, I've heard of it, you know, companies dealing with this. I mean, thank God I haven't had it happen to me, knock on wood. But, you know, somebody, if somebody in the organization emails an inappropriate joke um, and it gets out there, I mean, the, the damage to that company is huge. So, you know, if you're dealing with an HR type law firm, you could do a webinar customized for their audience and what that, you know, what would align with the messages they are trying to promote, right? Um, if you, let's say you are um, maybe just a, you know, you're like a business attorney, then just to how to keep your employees productive and work, you know, work in the shutdowns. So again, it, it depends. This is why I said, you know, you want to customize your approach based on the person that you're reaching out to. And you ask yourself, you know, what would they be interested in? What would their clients be interested in? And you go to them with this idea of, hey, we could do a webinar, a free report, a checklist, something, you know, and, you know, typically I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to them about, um, you know, here's something I can do for your clients. You know, do it like not asking them to sell you, but then that could evolve into where they're actually walking you in and you're you're paying them a commission. All right. What other questions, Mike, do we have? Okay, perfect. Yeah, the, those were the big questions. We've got a couple people uh, who liked it. They want to make sure they're getting the replay. Yeah, just check. Uh, make sure you're checking your emails. You will get a replay. It'll probably be tomorrow by the time we have that uh, replay available on this. But Robin, that's all the questions we have for right now. All right. I stunned them into silence. That's great. <laughs> um, well, guys, I hope it was helpful. Again, um, you know, go over to technologymarketingtoolkit.com forward slash consult. Um, you know, when you sign up, we're going to ask you to fill in a, a brief survey just so we can learn a little bit about you. Um, you'll, you can book your appointment time right there. So you choose whatever's convenient for you. Um, then my team is going to, someone from my team is going to reach out just to confirm the appointment and get all the materials over to you. Um, again, we customize this. So it's, it's not cookie cutter. So even the materials we'll send you, if, if you're a smaller shop, we might send you something versus if you're, you know, um, a, a bigger MSP, if you're doing, you know, 20, 30 million, we'll send you something different, you know, so we're going to customize that, but all those materials, and then on the consultation, they're going to go through that roadmap with you um, and answer a lot of the questions that you have. So I'd recommend you do that. 
Appreciate your time, Mike. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. I think that's it. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.